Welcome, everybody, to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and today we've got a special show. Today we are looking at Ludwig Enterprises on the OTC under ticker LUDG. Ludwig Enterprises is a biotech healthcare holdings company. They are a global leader in mRNA genomics and machine learning AI technology. And that's where it gets juicy, folks. With the help of AI, the company is making tremendous scientific breakthroughs with early stage cancer diagnosis. But this is also being used for diseases such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, and heart disease. And the big news is that they are launching a one-of-a-kind, non-invasive, at-home cancer screening test, folks. This is not going to just change the world. It's going to change your life. It's going to change everybody's lives. And to tell us more about all of this, we are talking to two guests today, as you can see on the screen. We have Dr. Marvin S. Halsman, the CEO and co-founder of the company. And we are also joined by another special guest, Jose Antonio Reyes. Thanks for being with us today, guys. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. It's my pleasure, and it's going to be our viewers' pleasure as well. Now, we've got a lot of information that we want to cover. There's a lot of exciting things happening with this company right now, and it's exciting for everybody. It's exciting for the world. But before we jump into talking about the company, I always have a habit of telling my viewers whenever we look at a pink on the OTC, we have to be very cautious because there's a lot of bad companies hiding in the pinks, but there's a lot of good companies down there too. So how do you tell the difference? Well, I tell everybody when you're looking at the information about the company, take it with a grain of salt. What you want to look at is the management. Pinks have a problem with validated information. We don't get a lot of it, if any. What you do get validated is the information about the management. You can see their scoreboard. You can see what they've been doing in the past. So before we jump into the company, I want to jump into the management. I want to talk about you, Marvin, and I don't want you to be modest here. I want you to tell us some of your exploits, your uh, accomplishments, and most importantly, how you ended up here with Ludwig. Well, it's interesting. Um, I always think of by the jockey. <laughs> uh, you know, you have a good horse, but if the jockey doesn't know what to do with the horse, it's not going to ah, work. Right, right. Um, it's not about the horse. It is about the jockey. You're darn tooting. Yeah. But, you know, 95% of all biotech companies fail. I don't know if that's a pretty hard fact. Right. And the reason is that they, they don't have the right management to develop the technology that they have. In this case, I'm going to be about my background. I'm an MD from New York University School of Medicine in New York. Uh, I'm still on the Board of Governors uh, of the Alumni Association of the Medical School. It was just renamed to NYU Langone of Medicine uh, based on Eric Langone, the founder of uh, Home Depot. From okay. there, um, I became a general surgeon at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and they got drafted into Vietnam in the Marine Corps um, mm -hmm. in 1968. Um, my orders were changed. I was blessed because I had made some discoveries in, in typing people for transplants. It's called the HLA system. Okay. And when I was a fellow um, at NYU, I went to UCLA, worked in the lab of a very well-known immunologist called uh, Terasaki. And um, lo and behold, I was one of the first people to do hair transplants, kidney transplants. And I got orders changing me from uh, the Marine Corps back to the Navy and then was shipped off to NIH. Wow. That was in 1969. I think I arrived around the same team that, that Fauci arrived at NIH. Oh, wow. Right. Uh, um, we were both immunologists. Um, I went to another institute. And while there, I discovered, with the help of Dr. Ralph Schneiderman, another individual who was my mentor, was the head of the department, uh, the, the, the parts of your immune system that stimulates inflammation. And the body responds to inflammation for cancer. The body responds to inflammation for arthritis, ITIS, itis, hepatitis, myocarditis nephritis, 
Right. Who right is. I mean, 50% or more of all diseases are inflammatory in origin. Okay. And they don't just start from one day to the next. They, 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 they're there. They accumulate till they raise their ugly head and cause disease. Okay. In NIH, I was invited to go to UCLA where I became a pediatric kidney, a pediatric adult surgeon, and a kidney transplant surgeon. Um, I then was approached by Bristol Myers International that says, with your background, we'd like you to develop a drug called Duracef. It's a 24-hour cephalosporin, and I helped do the clinical studies in record time. That drug became the largest selling cephalosporin in the world at one time. Wow. Um, and then I went on to form a company called Medco Research because we were approached by other pharmaceutical companies. And Medco um, then started developing its own drugs because we found that a lot of technology was at universities. And the biggest pharmaceutical sure. would not go outside of their home base. And so we figured there was a much bigger opportunity for us, although we were paid well by Bristol, by Pfizer, by some of the other companies. We, in fact, we developed the largest selling antidepressant in the world today called Welbutrin. And that uh, it was developed at Duke University um, by the Welcome Foundation. We did the study. Then we started acquiring technology from universities, University of Virginia. We acquired what we call an adenosine franchise. These were receptors for heart disease and other conditions in the body. And we went on to, um, ultimately list on the New York Stock Exchange. Within mm -hmm. two years, we did one of the first adenosine receptors in record time. Uh, we formed an orphan drug application for uh, this particular disease called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. I don't want to bore your audience. Um, Thank you. And, and now I'm pleased to say we're a division of Pfizer. Uh, our, our office and our lab are still in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Um, around that time, um, my mother came down with um, dementia, and I devoted my life at that time, took all my funds, and formed a company called Exonix. I even rang the bell on NASDAQ. Hmm. Uh, it was a second marriage. My wife was there. We gave a lecture on Times Square, and I had the honor of opening the NASDAQ with Exonix. Exonix now is part of Raptor Pharmaceuticals. It was acquired by Raptor. And then I decided I'm going to start moving away from drug development. I became fascinated with the body's reaction to disease. Okay. How do you prevent it? What's the use of diagnosing everything when you don't have good nutrition? And so uh, I ended up doing a study with Michael J. Fox Foundation where I took a nutritional substance, and was able to reverse certain symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Wow. And Intel was very interested in what I was doing at that time, and they gave me two free licenses with two departments. One was with the supercomputer department, and the other one was with the artificial intelligence department. Wow. And I know a gentleman by the name of Dr. Kyle Ambert, Ph.D., and uh, Kyle and I have worked together since then, uh, and he's currently part of Ludwig and helping in the current technology. What we were able to show is that we could isolate a single substance from mushrooms, and we could give it uh, to the animal in a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, which is just like the FDA likes. Right. <laughs> able to show that we switched off a gene, mRNA, in the brain of the area where Parkinson's occurs. And so I was fascinated with this. And then about yeah. seven or eight years ago, we moved to Florida. My wife decided she wanted to compete and train in Florida. She's a professional athlete and horses. She Ooh. does Western dressage, English dressage. And I said, God, she's a keeper. I'm going wherever she goes. So we moved to Florida, and um, uh, someone said, you ought to go down and see a gentleman by the name of Frank Magliocetti down 
in Delray Beach. He has a lab called Genetic Institute of America with his wife. Mm -hmm. And he might be very interested in hearing about your development. So I went down there and I found out that he has a very close relationship with the largest genetic company in the world called Thermo Fisher. Okay. And they've got millions of dollars worth of equipment down there. And so I said, Frank, I would like to give Thermo Fisher 80 hits, 80 genetic hits on diseases outside the brain, heart disease, cancer, bladder cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, mental health even, depression, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. And so Thermo was able to sequence the mRNA of 48 out of the 80 hits I gave them. Now, can you explain to us, a lot of people understand the basics of DNA, the building blocks that we get from our parents. I don't think most of us understand what mRNA is. Can you tell us the difference there so we can keep up with I you? I a New York sense of humor. I don't think your parents look like you, did they? <laughs> <laughs> Little bit. Not not the beard. Mom didn't I know, I know. So we got to, no, that's a very good segue. The point is, you're given DNA from your yeah. mother. You're given DNA from your father. That's fixed. DNA does not change. Okay. Something has to stimulate DNA to make a human being. Right. What is the language of DNA? mRNA. Ah. So think think of life as a recipe, a menu. Uh huh. The DNA has the manual. Right. Right. For everything. But then that manual has to be interpreted. Okay. And that's what happens. So All then right. you differentiate into a zitter. You become a zitter yourself. Zidar. <laughs> zidar. Zidar. Anyway, so you become who you are. And then you form a, a bladder. You form a, a, a lung. You form a brain. But it's not your father's brain. It's not your mother's brain. It's your brain. True. And that's called differentiation. And so DNA is a very large molecule. Okay. The body allows RNA in the nucleus. Remember, DNA resides in the nucleus of the cell. You remember the cellular? Yeah, the nucleus is the center. Yeah, very small area. Yeah. And so we yeah. have mRNA in there with DNA. Now, the mRNA says to itself, boy, maybe I should take a snapshot of DNA. And then I will create proteins that this new embryo needs to right. become a person. And it does that in a very methodical way. And so the a, mRNA is basically an the how-to for DNA to do what it needs to do. Well, the DNA is fixed, remember. So you right. know, DNA is the manual. Now we got to make the Yamaha receiver work, right? <laughs> so you got to learn how to turn it on. So there's an enzyme in the nucleus called RNA transferase. Okay. Transfer. How do I transfer a very small segment of the DNA to the cytoplasm out of the nucleus? And then the cytoplasm is going to start producing proteins. Proteins that's needed for a liver, proteins that's needed for a kidney, protein that's needed for brain cells, right. and that's how the individual develops. Okay. <laughs> Why? So, so my legacy, which I'm now devoted to, I mean, I've done a lot in my life. I, I'm okay. no very accomplished. I, I was like to leave a legacy for healthcare. A lot of things in the medical industry. First of this, first of that, record breaking this. I mean, that's that's outstanding. You but know, you know, you know, John, you come into the world with your name, and you leave with your name. You're not going to take anything else with you. No. <laughs> so if I could show how this inflammatory reaction leads to these diseases. Now, another thing, about 20 years ago, there was an article in Nature magazine or Science, 
Okay. It fascinated me. It was a concept developed by Dr. Dvorak, D-V-O-R-A-K. And he said, cancer is a wound that does not heal. Mm. Cancer tricks your body, just like you cut yourself and then the body moves to heal it. Mm -hmm. Cancer is inside and it tricks the body to say, I'm a wound inside. Come right. take care of me. So your body gives it blood, it gives it nutrients, and that cancer grows up to kill you. Now, if it's a wound that doesn't heal, all wounds are caused by inflammation. Okay. So I had this microchip from Thermo Fisher with these 48 genes, and we formed the company, Frank and I called, a designer genomics. My wife came up with that. She says, designer genes, it should be designer genomics. <laughs> and, um, and so that we launched that and we started studying mRNA or collecting specimens all over the United States. We have now 3,000 specimens from 40 different clinics in the United States. All of the patients have different diseases. We have bladder cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, PTSD, mental health issues, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so recently, we decided to start analyzing it. So Frank, my partner, says, well, what would you like to do? I said, I want to hit cancer first. I'm a kidney surgeon. I'd like to go with the bladder cancer. My wife, two years ago, came down with breast cancer. So I was motivated there. And then colon cancer. At my age, everybody runs for colonoscopy. Right. Everybody has to have colonoscopy. Well, how do we modify what, what kind of snapshot on a personalized basis can we give you as an individual, not comparing you to everybody on the block? Looking at statistics doesn't give you that answer. So they say, because you live in whatever place, in Massachusetts, there's an increased incidence of 25% of pancreatic cancer in this town. That doesn't mean anything. It's no. What is the relationship to you? How did that, how did the pollution in the air, how did water pollution, how did all of these things influence your mRNA, not your DNA? Right. And so in, in retrospect, <clears throat> I wish I had this back two years ago, when uh, my wife came down with breast cancer, her DNA was fixed, it was, it was normal. So we would not have predicted that she would have developed. It was called BRCA1, BRCA2. Those right. are fixed DNA molecules that are, that are the higher incidence in people with breast cancer. So she was an outlier. And so that gave me even more stimulus to develop uh, the, this uh, technology. I, I believe that. Absolutely. It doesn't take much. When your family is hurt, you drop everything to take care of your family. Let me ask you another example. God, these things are all coming to me now. And I, my wife says I speak in paragraphs, so I apologize, okay? <laughs> um, when you drive your car, and I, I see the slide you have up here, understanding inflammation. Yeah. You think of inflammation as the engine light. Okay. When the light comes on. What do you do? Panic. <laughs> okay. After you panic, pull the car you, over. <laughs> you don't run away from the car. What do you do? No, I try to figure out what the problem is so I can get that light off. Oh, have you been able to do that yourself? Not normally. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? There's no point. I don't have the expertise. I really don't know what I'm looking at. Or where you look. well, oh, oh, this is now getting into the key part of this whole thing. What do you need to do to diagnose that engine light? Get an education or go hire someone who has that education. No, John, you're driving a Honda. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is call, make an appointment at the Honda dealer, right? Where you bought it or the service department. Most likely. So what does that Honda dealer do? He looks at your car, the engine light's on. He doesn't know. <laughs> right. He hooks it up to a computer. Right. And that computer then puts out codes that tell you what to look for. Right. Yes. Well, mRNA, we have discovered the 
computer composed of the mRNA for specific diseases. And so wow. when that engine light comes on, we can then use artificial intelligence and machine learning to program your data, who you are. Maybe we, maybe we put in, you have a big beard, you know, you can grow hair, where you were born, where you're coming from. And that's called machine learning. Mm -hmm. And so the computer then analyzes you as a specific individual. So right. you are your own future. Personalized you medicine. Future. Huh? Personalized medicine. Absolutely. And you yeah. can't do that by looking at mass numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that. I, I like the fact that you're able to take a snapshot of the body like that machine does for the car and then be able to focus in on the problems. AI to me is exciting because it can do a lot more work, a lot faster, a lot deeper with the information we give it. If we've got great information, and I have always said, AI needs to be in the medical sector. This is where we need it the most. Forget about traffic congestion or controlling our lights going off and on at the right time of day. I want healthy people in our world. I am sick of seeing half the world with the cancer gene and one third of them infected. That's a lot of bloody people. And if you could come up with something that can take that down, I'm excited. That's where AI deserves well, it's it. Not, it's not really taking it down. It's a sensitive, dynamic signal. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you definitely have that cancer. Okay. It means that you have the propensity to have the other formulas in your body that's interpreting your mRNA. And then, well, it leads to the next level of this company, where if you know that you have, say you have glioblastoma, devastating brain cancer, yeah. Uh, maybe you have a year to live. The FDA approved the drug temozolomide by Merck. Temozolomide, I understand, may be selling $2 billion, except it only helps about 25% of the people. And the 25% it helps gives them another two or three months. But there was nothing else, so the FDA allowed it. Right. But if sure. you could discover the mRNA that's produced by glioblastoma stem cells. Remember, you have stem cells that differentiate into your organs. Cancer wants to live. It produces stem cells. Oh. And within that stem cell, the cancer cell will say, wait a minute, they're giving me temozolomide. I better produce a gene, maybe that blocks temozolomide. If we can, if you can discover that, using artificial intelligence, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you can inhibit that RNA. It's called RNAi. Okay. RNA inhibitory. Right. You block that and you allow temozolomide to work 400% better. Now, we've already, by the way, we're not here to discuss that today. We're going to do a subsequent program, but we're able to do that. And John... Let me add something, because let's go back to that um, analogy of the car. Right? Okay. What the Ludwig, and I, I want Marvin to think about, uh, back to the jockey. The jockey is not just Marvin, it's a team, correct? Right, exactly. I want, I want Marvin to discuss in a little bit, a little bit more about- I'm gonna take a little water, excuse me for a minute. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more about Frank, right? The co-founder and, um, and describe uh, more about his experience on the pharma side and the sales side, because a scientist and all of their knowledge is not enough to go to market, right? Okay. We, we may have gold, we have gold here, right? But if we can't take that gold out of the ground, refine it, re distill it, and present it in a way that is sellable to the market, that gold remains of little value. And what Marvin has now partnered with Frank, myself, and some other experienced members who have experience in take going to market, a market product fit, right? Okay. Uh, so I want Marvin to describe a little bit about Frank, but to finish out that analogy, this um, test home testing kit that Ludwig is going to market in, uh, in the right. fall that we'll, we'll discuss a little later, 
is the is the is the way for a person to see the engine light and be informed about their body regarding four distinct cancers because oftentimes when you go to a mechanic you don't know that you're always, you're always like when i go to the doctor i don't know when i go to the mechanic i don't know i'm at their their, their mercy they could right. come and say you have all these problems and then you're like really do i well, the signaling that's provided by the mRNA kit that we have generated gives the driver the information specific to his body, as we were saying, personalized information about this dynamic signaling. So when they go to the mechanic, they don't go, I have an engine light on. They say, I have a clear dynamic signaling marker that makes that seems to indicate that my engine might be propense to a problem with either cancer in the right. throat, bladder or skin or, or breasts. So you we're informing, empowering the the, the driver, the, the, the customer and the client to engage their professionals, in this case, the doctor, with actual information that has been scientifically proven to be accurate about their own body. Um, I should carry you around more with me. You could really bring it down to a level people understand. <laughs> That's why we're here. That's why John has us both, Marvin. But Marvin, you have five, six years of relationship with Frank. Go back to Frank. Describe to us what Frank brings to the table and his experience um, in the pharmacy. Well, number one, he's a nice person. So yeah, I walk into a room. I, I listen, you reach a high five. My first rodeo, you know, I've met some real beauties out there, you know, and so a lot of them are in it for just for money. Uh, mm -hmm. I was really well taken with Frank when I first met him. He had financed this lab with Thermal Fisher for his wife for several million dollars. It was a dream he had, and it, that was another positive. The other thing is Frank had a vast experience in the pharmaceutical industry on the other side of the coin from me. Frank was a top executive at Sandoz, one of the largest companies in the world, pharmaceutical companies. And if I'm correct, he arranged the merger of Sandoz into Siba Geigy. Now, you, these people don't fall off trees. You can find someone like that who you could work with. And then he had a vast array of contacts in the investment banking field. He was an investment Ooh. banker himself. He has a family office, and uh, they finance companies. And so it was a marriage made in heaven. That's right. I don't like that. My wife. No, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we uh, brought on a, an equally experienced CFO uh, in Scott Silverman to, to sit on the board alongside uh, Dr. Hausman. By and the way, also Frank Bruin and new Scott Silverman. So <laughs> it showed uh, that we were in the right place. Right. Because, as you know, as an OTC, especially one looking to uplist soon, we needed someone with a lot of experience in, in the delicate legal kind of implications with the securities, you know, the SEC. And his experience in managing the detail as well as understanding the laws and the global federal responsibilities that a company has um, was key. Bringing me on was important in order to just uh, coordinate, organize, create, because there, there is an amazing integrity in this company. Um, when, when Marvin talks about his experience, you don't have 40 years of experience like this without integrity. A fidelity, right? I agree. Yes, data to science, and and you don't get that reputation overnight. Mm -hmm. Frank, same in the in the buying and the selling in the pharma space. Let's face it, integrity is not uh, high on when people think of pharma's. They don't immediately think integrity, and yet Frank has maintained that, and his success as a result is due to that. Same with Scott, myself, and then you know a go-to-market strategist uh, is something that I immediately brought on and Garrett Laporto, who right out of Northeastern was hired by Bill Gates to work a few doors down from him to develop technology and coding and platforms that could go to market. Because again, it's not just about the code, about the technology, it's about how to frame it, package it, and bring it to market. Sure. As our, as our incoming CMO, COO, CFOs, you know, we've got all of the C-suites covered. And <laughs> 
bottom line is it's integrity um, and delivering value to our to our client base. It sounds like a dream team to me. I mean, seriously, and that's what I was after. I wanted you to tell me about your team because being on the pink, we are getting taken a lot by a lot, lot of companies. So that integrity that you talk about is what we are looking for. And yes, Marvin, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting point. Sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> companies have to start someplace, mm -hmm. just like a baby's born. I you're not suddenly there, you know, on Wall Street. <laughs> you're a baby. You have to go home from the hospital with your mother. Uh, I mean, so pink sheets will play a role, <laughs> but it's just the beginning. Yeah. It's just the beginning. And just to, just to emphasize that, I, I, I've been CEO of too many companies. You should look at, if you look at my resume, I, I said I would never do this again. Uh, from the NASDAQ to, to uh, ringing the bell on NASDAQ to New York Stock Exchange, uh, companies part of Pfizer and many other, I haven't even touched on some of the others. However, a couple of months ago, well, maybe it's four or five, I decided to commit as CEO of Ludwig Enterprises. Yes. And the reason I did it yeah. is because I, the buck will stop here with me. It's either going to fail or it's going to be successful because of the work we're putting into it. You don't get two looks. This is a very, this is game changing technology. That's what I think. I and think yeah, well, this, this is way beyond just cancer. What about HIV? Because HIV continues to grow in your body despite the triple drug therapy that you're using. Sure and you sure got to stay on it to rest. What if I could reprogram your RNA? In patients with HIV. What if I could reprogram your RNA in COVID? You wouldn't need a vaccine. The cell itself would produce the protection against COVID. And this can, this technology can be used for all these diseases you're talking we about? Just, we're, we just acquired, we're in the process of acquiring patents on that too. And right. so all of this stuff that I've described to you, I just finished writing a patent, which I do, and we filed on how to collect the cells, how to take cheek swabs, um, how to use the right Q-tip, so to speak. It's made by a company called Copan. And what genes we've discovered, what is the importance of those genes. And it's, it, it's not hearsay. So I even challenged myself. So we came up with four specific genes that are signals related to bladder, breast, and colon cancer, maybe skin cancer. And so I challenged myself by going into the literature, and I had a lady, her name is Lena Diaz, who helped me do this, and I said, I want to know any article that mentions these genes and any cancer out there. We stopped at 250 articles. And these are peer-reviewed journals. I mean, right. that means the world was asking for this. And lo and behold, it's right before us all. Yeah. So I know your company's involved in a lot more than just this, but this is what is happening right now. It is, it's a game changer. In the cancer arena, this is a game changer. It's actually going to answer questions, which is the biggest problem with cancer. We worry and doubt because we have no answers. That's what you're supplying us, which is going to give us security in having those answers. Now, how close are we to having this product coming out? And can you tell us a little more about how you use it? You said it's invasive. I've heard the word Q-tip. How does this work? John, uh, Marvin, you want me to show show the? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been yeah. enough. Okay. Take it over. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, you got one. Go for it. We can watch. <laughs> John, to and to reiterate, the 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 kit that will be arriving um, now in October has already been used and proven over. in over three thousand uh, clinical trials, cancer patients, around forty different clinical sites. In order to provide the data that our data AI expert um, Kyla Amber has has essentially analyzed, right? So we've got the proof is already in the lab, but we're not have not gone to market 
with the kit and we'll be doing that in the fall. So now we've got our CMO who's preparing his, our own packaging. And it's really simple. Um, the package arrives. It has all the types of instructions that you need inside, including sign here. Uh, uh, tabs. We, right. we include, imagine this, a, a, a pen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no excuses here. And, and instructions, right? Of yeah. course, you know, the the actual swab, which is... Uh, yeah, you know, and there, Antonio, hold up the instructions. It was interesting. The sure. picture, the, it's yeah. well put together. It is well put together, but it's going to be even uh, simpler than yeah, this. Look how easy that is. I mean, oh, and yeah. be, and if we, we plan on it. We can do a video of this easily. Right, right. And John, we could certainly provide that. But then... Everyone's familiar, as, especially after COVID, with cotton swabs, right? And they're, they're, mm -hmm. But we're typically used to having them go into our nasal passages. Wow. This is as simple as opening the, the bag. The cotton swab is inside. You pop it open. You have the swab. And um, talk about non-invasive, correct? Versus uh, pricking urine, blood, uh, feces. It's, it's merely a matter of, you know, taking in the swab and 10 times, less than when you're brushing your teeth, right? Uh, 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 very rigorously. I've seen this many times on law shows when they want DNA samples from criminals. Right. Uh, oh, they're familiar. <laughs> you know, while he's doing that, may I just add something? I went into the literature recently to say, where does mRNA accumulate the most? In what cells? Is it better than a liquid biopsy of a breast cancer? Is it better than a, than a uh, blood cancer? It turns out that the cheek cell, for whatever reason in life, probably has the largest collection of mRNA, and it's stable. I want you to go come back to that, Marvin. Then you just... Pop that in. You even have a little red line here showing you uh, that you cut that off. It's pre-cut so that it fits into yeah. the, the tube. And of course, uh, then we provide a, uh, a a way of mailing it back. Um, oh. It will eventually, uh, the way we'll have is a portal, much like in order to provide HIPAA compliant um, you know, confidentiality, the patient would, within uh, five to seven working days, maybe two weeks maximum, be able to log into their portal using their own exclusive unique ID and have a patient's results. Um, and uh, Marvin, continue your conversation about cheeks and what those results would look like and uh, what exactly are they signaling? Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you were rubbing your cheek and it really stimulated yeah, me to tell people that. But in essence, so we filed all this in a patent about two months ago. We're probably first in the world to file on using cheek cells with this particular cotton tip swab. This is very important. It's not a matter of just using any cotton tip swab. You have to accumulate these cells. You have to ship them, right? Then you have to isolate them. And so we took over the last two years different samples, different temperatures, different times between collection and analysis. And we were able to show that you need a, DNA is easy, by the way. DNA is a large molecule. It's easy to find, it's easy to measure. RNA is very small. <laughs> and we were able to show that we could accumulate between 20 and 40 nanograms of of RNA. Marvin, and if that, I recall, even the swab is inside our patent, correct? Oh, absolutely. Because that was that, part of, the company that makes the swab got very excited about what we were doing and came to us and said, well, we'll supply you with all the swabs you need forever. And I said, well, then I will put you in any paper I write, any patent that we yeah. file, you'll be there. And so if the swab is in there. The amount of RNA is in there. We also have outlined the genes that are involved in bladder cancer, colon cancer, and um, 
just think of colon cancer. You know, how many people know whether they should have a colonoscopy or not? You have a big company, Colagard, it's a $2 billion company. Yeah. We have a very simple test as compared to what they make people go through. Uh, and well, you, it's a signal. doesn't mean you got to run out and shoot yourself. You have cancer. Go see the doctor. Go it, have an it, exam. Why not the, have a colonoscopy? It's, it's the information, this, the signaling you need to walk into the mechanic, the doctor, with the right kind of uh, scientific information to speak informed, uh, empowered by your own body. By, by the simple test. I'm sorry, to, I'm so so sorry to what we're talking about. I keep throwing out things. So when we went into the literature, the world literature, one of the genes that we discovered, and it's all, it's patented, it's so all say it online, CCL27, capital C, capital C, capital L, and the number 27. That's an mRNA gene. We found that that mRNA gene, not ours, but another scientist out there said, the higher the level of this mRNA gene, and he was using blood, by the way, not cheek cells, indicated who would respond best to anti-bladder cancer therapy. Wow. Just the level of that gene. And we have those articles. We're going to come out with a white paper. We're going to show the world what we really have. Yeah. That's amazing to me. And yet we did not know that. We filed patents on the model that was created by Dr. Ambert. Now, may I add that Dr. Ambert was recently recruited by Nike Corporation. Nike, He's the right. director of artificial intelligence and data analytics at Nike. He came straight from Intel and he's on the patent with me that we just filed. So our model of artificial intelligence, <clears throat> remember, artificial intelligence is only as good as the person who creates it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to program into that model what you're looking for. Sure. Are you looking for a six foot two individual? Are you looking for a white person on, or Hispanic? Right, Who are you right. looking for? What history of cancer is there in the family? Not just take a cheek cell. That's why you have artificial intelligence called machine learning. It updates itself. You put the data in and then it continues to update to say, give me more or give me less or let's see what we have at this point. That is amazing. Yes, AI is going to help us do a lot better work with the information we've already drudged up. Well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we're just learning. Yeah. Everybody think you say AI. Well, we now we we're not going to buy a Tesla today. It's an autonomous car, and it had an accident in Tes Texas, and we can't refuel it. This is a totally different concept. How long have you been using AI to assist you with your research? since I did the Michael J. Fox Foundation in Parkinson's disease about 15 years ago. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I thought this was something more recent. You've been invested in this for a while then. Yes. I needed the help because in Parkinson's disease, uh, we had a large group of animals, huge number. Uh, we had four cohorts, and we were looking at heavy metals, 10 different heavy metals, arsenic, mercury, copper. I mean, we had so many variables that you needed a supercomputer to analyze it. Right. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. And that's what's so exciting. We are already seeing breakthroughs with AI. And we're just, as you said, the tip of the iceberg. Oh, no, no. We're just beginning. It's going to be very exciting. And yeah. that's, what I, that's why I wanted you on the show, because this is like the first inning of a great game. And <laughs> we are getting seats at this great game. So you said it takes about seven to 10 days to get back, or you can go to your portal and get your information. Okay. How easy is it to read that information? Are we going to need assistance and understanding what we're looking at? Do you have any sort of open chats or some AI to explain it to us or anything like that? Uh, I'm sorry, Antonio, you can answer, but you, you're under specific HIPAA rules. The only two people who we're going to be, we're going to correspond with will be the patient himself mm -hmm. and his doctor or her doctor. 
Okay. Um, we cannot have an open chat room. There's no controls of that. Um, no, I didn't mean an open chat. I meant like with some AI robot or somebody in your team that can lay out the information for them. Because I don't know. I'm presuming it's going to be pretty detailed. But I see you. Well, well, but but in, in the questions, to do the study to begin with, we need an institutional review board approval. So I had to write the protocol, submit it to one of the largest IRBs. These are governmental organizations that say it's ethical what you're doing. This is the right study. And so we did that. So all of these samples were accumulated under a HIPAA compliant IRB approved study. So we have permission to go back to the doctor and the patient. And obviously they're gonna be very interested in continuing the discussion. Yeah. For example, if, you, if you're a urologist and I was a urologist, and the patient comes to you with bladder cancer, and we find this gene, CCL27, at a very high level, wouldn't the doctor be interested in knowing that so he knows that maybe he has to be more careful with the drug he's going to use, that if he uses that drug, maybe he should take a look in the bladder sooner than wait? Absolutely. So I think the information isn't just good for the patient. It's great for the doctor. He can do a much better job if he has the right Absolutely. information in a timely manner. No, exactly. If if you empower um, drivers to go more often to the mechanic because they know that their light is on, right? Then the mechanic is less like is less inclined to try to over, uh, let's say, prescribe. They can go specifically to resolving the issue and just see many more clients, patients in this case. And the other thing you could do is after he fixes the car, see if it works better. Because no. if you have a particular disease and you have this signal, see if it changes after treatment. Right. And and uh, of impacting the treatment is something that the company is also doing a great deal of research that we won't talk about today. Okay. Uh, because we want to get this signaling message out. But John, right. your simple answer, if, if, we're, if these instructions are simple, the ability yeah. to read your portal and understand based on scales that will provide in clear charts as yes. to where you lie in, in the kind of, yeah, again, thousands of, you know, we've already sequenced thousands of patients. So we, and we have hundreds of articles to back up the kind of the, the way and we, we build these indices to inform mm -hmm. the patient. So mm -hmm. no. They won't need a, a, an MD or a PhD, uh, which our scientists like Marvin have. Uh, it's intended, much like uh, the cola guards of the world, to speak to the layperson and just Good. inform them. Imagine if, you're, if your engine light, you couldn't read it properly, right? Or it confused right. you, it gave you right. too much information. Um, so I heard you mention that you were going to have this out, you said October of this year? Correct, in the fall, right. It, you know, so we are anticipating revenues to be coming in, maybe. Oh, this absolutely. year, yes, and yeah, revenues this year—that's not a doubt. Uh, there are other revenue sources that we're not mentioning here today that will, in okay. fact, occur be prior to that. But our focus is the launch of this. Yes, revenues. Um, uh, you know, trying to be cautious, careful, and conservative right. are, are exciting. And, um, and any projections you could throw out there? No, that's the, the kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I tried. I'll I tried. tell you this. I'll tell you this. A million dollar question. That's right. I'll tell you this. A million dollar question. Our chief, our chief marketing officer uh, has been successful with, you know, both startups as well as the Ben and Jerry's and large enterprises in, in generating a lot of viral um, communication, effective marketing, direct to client. And because this will be a direct to client, um, customer based campaign, he's, he is uh, well known in the circles for viral campaigns. So getting the message out to enough people won't be an issue. Making the message clear, given our expertise in our, our, it won't be an issue. I think the uh, the issues are more macro. Uh, where where will the general pub public be in the fall, right? Um, regarding their health and information issues that we can't control. Uh, you know, are they worried more about a hurricane uh, or a seismic something? Uh, issues that we can't control. 
so we can't really predict or estimate um but it will be very exciting to see it is interesting when you just said the hurricane everybody goes and do am i related to george washington through ancestry.com that is dna uh -huh. how's that going to help you live longer if you're related <laughs> to george right 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 no no our, our information will do that for you but it, now, it is tell us how much the kit is supposed to go for sure uh, that's going to range in the between the 200 and 250 mark and how often do you need to use the test uh honestly marvin i think it um it, it's it's not intended to be used uh on a monthly basis or anything like that i think the, the mrna signaling dynamic signaling is meant to um for once um i would imagine what what does the science say i would well, really answer that as a clinician <laughs> i practiced a long time i'm 83 years old let your body be your guide mm. let your body tell you yeah your body you don't did you, you think you developed arthritis yesterday you developed it over two years. Mm -hmm. Let your body be your guide. For example, everybody says, oh, if you're going to go to the beach, I'll give you this is a, just one example. So you go to the beach. What do you do? Well, everybody said put sunscreen on. So you put sunscreen all over. Then you go home and you wash the sunscreen off. Then the next thought you have is, should I visit the dermatologist? Right? Well, what if, what if we had a cheek swab that shows you that the gene involved in skin and skin cancer is normal or is elevated. You have a signal to go and seek earlier examination. And that is what's most crucial here. All the time you hear with cancer. Yeah. You only I mean, got suddenly, earlier. Suddenly you develop arthritis. You might want to say, well, I'm not going to wait till the symptoms get worse. And we, we have a gene that actually says you have the inflammatory profile of someone who has rheumatoid arthritis. Doesn't mean you're going to have it. You are in the process of moving in that direction. So you call your doctor up and you, you sleep better that night and you go, and now, how, how, wait, hey, even better, have you tried to call a doctor recently and get in right away? <laughs> Yeah, I've tried that. <laughs> Doesn't work. It's it's almost as bad as the dentist these days. You just can't find a window that they can squeeze you in. And when they do, they're so busy, so busy that you wonder yeah. if they are getting enough information in the little amount of time that they're with you. So when uh -huh. you got something like this, that's all the information they really need. You, know, you don't want to panic. You don't want to get nervous. You just want to know that you yeah. should seek treatment and evaluation. Security. There's answers in security. Security and answers. <laughs> That's so Marvin, what you're, saying. you're saying use use the um, this the screening uh, service that we're rolling out. Listen to your body and let your body inform as to when you might want to order um, the screening on a. On a on Are you guys going to do TV advertising like Colaguard? Uh, eventually, but that's not the smartest way to go. Uh, oh. Honestly, the smartest way to go is not getting uh, a baseball player or a movie star to to you know, <laughs> or a talking box. Or a talking box. No, it's really right now. It, as understanding as our CMO does, the social medias, the, the way people are actually interacting these days, which is more streaming. I, I know that you think this is primarily you know pointed towards the fifty plus, but in fact, we're hearing all the time that breast cancer. You should. If you're 40, you should be pursuing it. So our our marketing is going to be um, more uh, precise and strategic as opposed to, you know, marketing, right? And uh, and we know that um, eventually you get to a certain point um, of strategic marketing when the word of mouth takes over, and that's what 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 we see in in social media. You get to a tipping point, yeah. and then suddenly it goes viral because everybody's talking about the value that we bring um, by providing them, you know, the signaling, dynamic signaling information that informs them um, about their health and wellness. And that's, I think, not going to be limited to 50 year olds. Um, 
but it's, it's moving on down to the millennium. I, I presume you'll have also a website where people can go to actually get it. Yeah, I, absolutely. I wouldn't go to it now because our, our current CMO that we I just hired a couple of weeks ago is rebranding that. But when it's ready to go to market, absolutely. The, the, web, the, the social media will bring you to a landing page. Mm -hmm. so that you can quickly order that but it, you could you'll be able to order it from your phone from your tablet from any device um without a lot of sort of um, hassle <laughs> well another thing you know for a company you know as i'm running ceo we're now free to show the genes that we've discovered remember we've just filed the patent worldwide right well we're covered so we could actually expose this to the world perfect timing to have you guys on the show and we'll probably need to do another one because as you said and i said you do more than just this this is just what's hot right now this is going to change the world it's going to change the way we deal with cancer we're just not going to be victims anymore we're, we're going to be enlightened we're going to be ahead of the game which in cancer is the most important thing early detection the earlier the better being aware that you even have that possibility keeps you on guard so that you don't neglect yourself for too long which is easy to do in a world that it, it, it stresses you because you say okay i'm doing this mm -hmm. instead of playing ignorant mm -hmm. right. yeah you know, right there's no need to be I, ignorant when yeah. we have the knowledge now yeah absolutely power and uh and um uh, in informed data and smart science that we're just uh, giving, sharing with the, with the world. It's really exciting to bring that kind of. Well, we are coming up on an hour now, and I do believe we successfully covered all the things we wanted to cover in this show. Like I said, we'll have to do another show because you're involved in other things that are exciting as well. But AI, cancer research, that, that's a dream come true right there. These are answers we have been looking for forever, and now they are coming to us. What a time to be alive. I'm excited for, for this. Can I stimulate your future just to give you a little inkling, <clears throat> which I'd love to do, <laughs> stimulate your fancy. We've really taken the information, and we have an ongoing study in glioblastoma, one of the most incurable cancers in the world. Yep. And so that study, we should have some transformative data by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exciting. That's I've known people with it, and and there's no hope. I mean, you know, it's a death. It's oh, a, terrible. I, yeah. I understood that Bo Biden died of glio. Mm -hmm. Ted Kennedy died of glio. Senator McCain died of glio. Wow. I just wow. shouldn't have told me recently about that. It's horrible. So you're bringing hope to the front. And mm. that is a great thing. You talk about a product that people are going to be interested in, hope. Hope is always the best seller. We always want it. Always what about it. all of us? We, we need to be healthier. What about all of us? This is good for all of us, yeah. the three of us, everything for the future. It makes worth a lot. It I thank you for coming back into the arena, Marvin. I mean, <laughs> you kind of stepped out there for a while, and you've come back at 83 years old. Thank you. You know, a lot of people would just be well, well, uh, June 26, 83. So I'm not there yet. But oh, let, right. Let's not push it too far. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is. I hate it when someone says you're 65. I am not. I'm 63. Get it right. <laughs> as if it matters, right? <laughs> John, oh, that we all had uh, Marvin's brain power at, uh, at 53, let alone <laughs> 82. Uh, but thank you, John. This has been a pleasure. It has been our pleasure as well. Um, I would like to talk to you again at some point, uh, maybe a after the end of summer, when things are changing into the next gear, we, we can see what's going on. Folks, remember to do your own due, due, due diligence behind me. We only covered some of the information. As I said, there's a lot more about this company we haven't even touched on to. We touched on to what is most exciting, bringing hope into the world by diagnosing cancer early so that we can keep our lives healthy. Hey, John, for, John, can you, uh, is it possible? That we're, we're an open book. There's right. no stupid questions, only stupid answers. <clears throat> so we're here to help people. Right. So perhaps they can contact you if they want more information. Absolutely, folks. If you have any questions, 
pass them on to me. I'll pass them on to Marvin and Jose, and we'll see if we can get you some answers. Perfect. This is a big deal. As far as I'm concerned, this is where AI belongs first. We'll take care of everything else later. Let's take care of us, the people of the planet. Who will take care of the planet if you can take care of us. <laughs> well, folks, we'll see you again. As I said, do your own due diligence. You will be impressed, just as I was. Thanks for being here, folks. We'll see you Thank soon. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. See you, folks. Ciao.